Hi, everyone. Welcome to Chapter 10, Section 10.1, Circles and Circumference. So we're going to get some basics here. We're going to get some um, terminology, some refresh, some talking about some parts of circles. So let's get right to it. So Section 10.1, Circles and Circumference, you've heard of both of these things before. We're going to identify and use parts of circles. We're going to solve problems involving circumferences and areas we'll throw in there as well. So first of all, the technical definition for a circle, you could probably define it, but if we're being technical, it's all points in a plane, so it's a two-dimensional figure, that are equidistant from a given point called the center C. If I measure from point C to any point on the circle, it's going to be the same distance. So it's equidistant from the center C. In the old days, maybe you took a string and you'd hold it down and then you'd go and trace around and pull the string tight and you'd end up with a circle, right? So it's all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point we usually call the circle the center C. So a chord is a part of a circle. It's any segment, segment, remember, has two endpoints, but those endpoints are actually on the circle. So any segment with endpoints on the circle. Notice the word on. That's important. It can't just be floating somewhere. It has to be on the actual circle, the curved portion. So I see two chords in this example that I've got up here. One of them would be segment AB. Notice you're still going to name it a segment, so put the segment symbol above the AB. And then the second, seg uh, the second chord would be segment DE. AB and DE both have endpoints on the circle. CF does not have endpoints on the circle. F is on the circle, but C is the center, so that does not work. Diameter, probably everybody knows diameter. Diameter is a special kind of chord that passes through the center. If it passes through the center, it probably makes common sense to you that that's the longest chord we can pro ever possibly find. So a chord that passes through the center, we do have one diameter. We've actually already named it once. The diameter of this circle, see, by the way, I should have set up here. We'll usually name a circle by its center point. So this case is circle C. If it had a D in the center, it would be circle D. So my diameter, I use two points to name a segment, will be segment DE. We already named DE as a chord, but now it's a special chord that goes through the center C. And last but not least, a radius. A radius is also a segment, but it's got one endpoint on the center, one endpoint on the circle. It doesn't matter in which order you name it. So my radius for this particular example, you could call it CF or FC, as long as you use both endpoints, one on the circle and one on the center. So segment FC would be a radius. When you do your assignment and you call it CF, we all know that's the same thing, right? It doesn't matter. We don't have any arrows, any vectors, anything like that. A couple technical things that go along with circles. First of all, we've got a term called, there it is, concentric circles. Concentric circles are just circles that are coplanar, so on the same plane, two dimensions on your paper that have the same center. In other words, they're like ripples when you drop a um, rock into a lake. They have the same center, but they're different sizes. Those are called concentric circles. So here's my center O. And then I've got this circle O, pretend that it's a good circle. And then I've got this circle O. They both have the same center, but they have different radiuses if we're being technical. 
all circles are similar figures. They're proportional to each other. Remember, similar means it has the same shape but different size. Makes sense when you put it in that term. And last but not least, two circles are congruent if and only if they have congruent radii. Radii, by the way, is plural for radius. As you go through math, if and only if is kind of one of those terms that we use a lot in math. And then because we're mathematicians, we get lazy and we start to call it IFF. IFF stands for if and only if. Two circles are congruent if and only if they have congruent radii. So if the radius on one is five and the radius on another circle is five, those two circles are congruent. Kind of not an earth-shaking situation. All right, so let's talk about a couple important formulas. The first one is circumference. Remember, circumference, people mix up their circumference and area, and they also mix up their formulas. So if you are a highlighter, this would be a good spot to highlight to make sure you've got these two differentiated. Circumference is the distance around the outside of the circle. If we were talking about a polygon, we'd say it's the perimeter. When we talk about a circle, it's the circumference, the distance around the circle. There is a formula for circumference. This one, again, people mix up this one with the area one. Circumference is equal to 2 times pi times r. Or if you prefer, circumference equals pi times the diameter. So we should probably talk about, real quickly, first of all, here's my circle with my center. This is a radius, right? This is also a radius. Those two radii are coming out, and if they form a straight line, that means that they're forming a chord. They're going all the way across that circle. Well, all the way across the circle is the diameter, the longest chord possible. So if this is a radius and this is a radius, two radii equal a diameter which means if I put those two radiuses together in that formula, I could replace that with the diameter. So it's the same formula. It's whichever one you like better. And this is, apparently I don't have something up here, measured in feet. I'll just put measured in units. Maybe it's feet, centimeters, yards, miles, kilometers, etc. Plain old units. Because it's just the distance. If I were going to walk around in a circle, how long, how far would I walk? Three miles, whatever it might be. That's an etc. There we go. Area, on the other hand, is the amount of space inside the circle. The amount of space inside the circle. This formula is similar to circumference. It's got the same parts as our 2 pi r, but they're in different places. The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared, pi r squared. Remember, order of operation says you have to square the r and then multiply it by pi. This one is measured in units squared. So it would be like square feet, feet to the second power, square centimeters, square inches, square kilometers, the amount of space inside the circle. So I'm going to ask you to find some areas or I'm going to ask you to find some circumferences. I also might say, oh, the circumference is something, find the radius. So you'd have to work backwards. So you got to pull out your old algebra skills. And last but not least, somewhere on here, make yourself a little note. Sometimes the problems ask you to find an exact um, value, find the exact circumference. If it says exact, you're going to do all the math except timesing by pi. 
you're going to leave a pi in the answer. If it doesn't say exact, you're going to use pi on your calculator and you're going to round to, I'm going to say the tenth, read the directions to see if I read, if I thought differently. Tenth or the hundredth usually. So one or two numbers after the decimal. So remember exact, there will be no decimals because you're going to leave a pi. So your answer might be something like the circumference equals 10 pi. That would be an exact answer. If I asked you to do that same problem, your answer might be something like the circumference equals 31.42. So we've got two different ways to write the answer. Those are the same number basically, but the 10 pi is exact. I don't have any decimals, no rounding happening. So that is the question. Make sure you double check to see, is it asking me to, round, to give an exact answer or round somewhere? All right, so let's talk about some more term. So there's going to be some problems where you need to use those formulas. So we've got some terminology. Remember, this is all about circles. Welcome to the world of circles in Chapter 10. So if we've got an inscribed polygon, inscribed, this little piece right here gives me my clue. Inscribed that this something is inside. So in my polygon, all of the vertices lie on the circle. They're all, the whole figure is inside the circle. For circumscribed, the circle contains all the vertices of the polygon. So I would say that uh, figure LMNP is inscribed in circle K. Or circumscribed means, so in, inscribed is inside, circumscribed is around the outside. So I could say circle K is circumscribed about LMNP. The circle is outside, so it's circumscribed. The quadrilateral is inside, so it's inscribed. All right, so I'll give you some figures and ask you some questions. Please notice that all the vertices are on the circle. They're not floating somewhere in circle K. They're all on the circle. That's really important. So examples, use the figure. So this is just naming stuff. So could you name the circle for number 1A? Remember, we always name it by the center. So we're going to go with a circle E. You have to write out the word circle. If you just put an E, I'm going to think you're talking about a point. I'm not going to know that you're talking about a circle. So you need the word circle. Sometimes they'll use a circle E like that. Tells the story either way. Name the radii. Radii is plural for radius. I would say that there are four radii in this problem. Again, you can name them from the center to the outside edge or the outside edge to the center. So segment AE would be a radius. EB would be a radius. CE would be a radius. And ED would be a radius. So four radii. Chords. I say that there are three chords. Remember, a chord is any segment that has endpoints on the circle. So three, actually four chords. One, two, three. No, yeah, four chords. Wow, there's a lot of chords on there. Anybody notice that AB was a chord? Put, make sure you put your segment about that. How about an AD? Anybody like an AD for a chord? Two more chords. I'd be willing to bet that somebody would tell me that AC is a chord. And last but not least, how about chord DB? 
so four cords. Last but not least, a diameter. What's the difference between a cord and a diameter? A diameter is a cord, and it has to go through a special place on that circle, which would be the center. So there are two cords on this circle. I would say that BD is a cord, and I would say that CA is a cord. Notice I keep purposely naming them in different order, because remember, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got your two endpoints, you are good. So I'm going to ask you to do some identify. If you know what we're talking about, that really, really helps you. So example number two is asking, how do radii and diameters relate to each other? I drew that little picture. Hopefully that helps you. So number two, it says circle R. Notice how it named it with the word circle in the, mi the middle, the center. Has diameters ST and QM. So watch for those kinds of things. It is telling you that ST is definitely a diameter, and it's telling you that QM is definitely a diameter. Sometimes they look like diameters, but you can't always make the assumption. So be skeptical. Look for the directions that tell you. If segment ST is 18, so this whole thing across here is 18, what should segment RS be equal to? We all know if it's 18 all the way across, R is in the center. So RS has to be equal to 9. If segment RM equals 24, QM, the whole way across, must be equal to another 24 or two 24s, which is 48. And last but not least, this is a good one to remind you. Segment Rn is equal to 2. Rn is this little guy right here. What's the length of segment Rp? Well, if Rn is a radius, all radius must be the same, right? Unless I change the problem on you. But if Rn is a radius and Rp is a radius, wouldn't you agree that Rp must also be equal to 2? So, so just some basics. Number three, I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to let you kind of figure things out. Um, the one thing that you de knew, do need to know is that respectively, it says the diameters of circle X. So X is the center. So this circle right here. Circle Y. This circle. And circle Z. So this circle are 22 millimeters, 16 millimeters, and 10 millimeters, respectively. So in other words, respectively means in order. So the first millimeter, 22, goes with the first circle X. So circle X has a diameter of 22. Circle Y has a diameter of 16. And circle Z has a diameter of 10. Sometimes on these problems, I think it's easier to work in radiuses instead of um, diameters. So maybe instead of saying that the diameter of circle X is 22, maybe you want to deal with 11 for the radius instead. Sometimes that helps. So for question letter A, it asks you to find the length of EZ. So from E all the way across to Z. So you're going to have to put together some radiuses and some bits and pieces and find things. And then for question B, it asks you to find the length of XF. That one should be an easy one, I think, if you can see it. All right, so we'll come back to problems like that. I'm going to ask you to do some, though. So, you know, draw things, do what you got to do to figure out the bits and pieces. And then let's, let's talk about this really quickly. So fill in the chart. I'm going to ask you to do this. If a symbol pi is used, do not use decimals, exact values. So for number, the first one across, I'm going to label this one, two, and three. Everybody should be good on number one. If the diameter is 4.8, we could figure out the radius, right? Because that's half of it. And then you could use your formula for C, circumference, 2 pi r, or pi times d, and area, which is pi r squared. However, when we get to problem number two, if I tell you that the circumference equals 20 pi, that means I've already done the math. I want to fill in the radius and the diameter. So this says that I've got a set up problem that says that the circumference equals 20 pi. I'm going to leave the inches off. 
and I'm going to put the formula in there. Instead of writing c equals, I'm going to write 2 pi r equals. When I do this math problem, don't be scared by the pi's. If I divide both sides by pi, they go away, and I'm left with a 2r equals 20. And then you could easily divide and know that your r equals 10. What does your diameter have to equal? We're back to that 20. And then you could plug in your formula, pi r squared. You just found the radius was 10. So you're going to do pi times 10 squared. Remember, if, if we've got a pi, we're going to use exact values. We're not going to go to decimals. So the best I can say is that pi times what's 10 squared? 100, right? So area is 100 pi. We always write the number first and the pi second. 100 pi, and if I were being technical, that would be square inches. I'm not going to go to 314 point something. I'm going to leave it as 100 pi because it asked for exact values. So you got to work backwards to work forward. You're going to work backwards for number um, 3 with the 81 pi. You're going to set that equal to pi r squared. Divide by pi's, and then you know how to get rid of a square. All right, last but not least, find the exact circumference of circle P. In order to find circumference, wouldn't you need, agree that we need to know either the diameter or the radius? Really, once you know one, you know both. Inside that circle, I see an inscribed rectangle. And I see an inscribed rectangle that has um, legs. Actually, I then see it divided by a diagonal. And I've got myself a right triangle. You didn't know these right triangles were going to come back so quickly, right? So if I could find that hypotenuse of that right, right triangle, would I have enough information to find the exact circumference of circle P? How do you find the missing side of a right triangle? I'm thinking a little Pythag here. So if I did 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared, do my math and square root it, I believe that I would have the hypotenuse of that triangle. I also believe that the hypotenuse is equal to the diameter of the circle. Once I know the diameter of the circle, I can do myself a math problem. All right, so I hope I've got a lot of review in here, maybe a couple of uh, refreshers with formulas and working backwards. Um, that is it for section 10.1. We'll talk about this more tomorrow. And assignment on page 701, 10 to 22 all, and then 24 to 32 the evens. I do have some circle graph paper if you feel like you need it. Otherwise, you'll probably just do that right on notebook paper. But if you need some um, guidance, we'll make sure you get some. That's it for 10.1. Have a great day.